Welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about how we are actually living out this walk with Jesus. Uh, I'm here with Pastor Dan. Good morning. My name is Antonio. And as always, Rock Life Podcast is a ministry, a sermon rewind, if you will, here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in San Bernardino, California. That's right, Inland Empire, in the house. And so we are so glad to be with you. Hey, I know that I'm having a great time. We pray that you are having a great time. If so, we want to encourage you to help spread the word, maybe share this episode or message. And uh, really, it, it encourages us. And I believe that it's encouraging you. Not a week goes by that someone doesn't come up to us at church or even offsite uh, when I run into people in the store. Oftentimes, I've had people mention that they enjoy it. And so that always encourages me. And uh, we keep doing this. We're being pretty consistent, Pastor Dan. That's I, awesome. I've, it's been amazing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure how long we've gone. Even if we're not here, it's bigger than us, right? That's right. So, um, but we are so glad to be here. Pastor Dan, this week, and we were kind of just talking off air, you had another banger of a, not just the message, but these titles speak for themselves. And so we talked about living right in a world that's gone wrong. If yeah. I get that right? Okay. Yeah, you did. Living right in a world and, gone uh, wrong. Last night you you talked about you don't want to miss this, right? Or don't don't, miss, mi- this don't miss this message, yeah. Don't miss this message. And so, I mean, that one speaks for <laughs> Click bait if yeah, I've ever no, seen it, so, you know. I, so I love it. I love yeah. it. It makes it simple for us. Uh, and I think we might have talked about it here, but YouTube has become the second largest search engine, second to Google. Right. So when people have questions, they come on YouTube. Yeah, they're looking for the how to's of, you know, anything, how to get the coin out of their washing machine. You know, <laughs> I think I did yeah. that one years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, I mean, you don't need, sometimes you don't even have to go to Google anymore because you know you want the video of right. it. Right. So you just go to the. Yeah, video. how to chop onions the right way. I mean, there's probably 50 videos just yeah. on that. So someone, someone should fact check that. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, people are looking for, for how to do life and they're looking for those things. And, and um, I was taught years ago by Pastor Jim with the title, he would say that he took more time on his title than he did on the message, mm-hmm. which kind of mm-hmm. blew my mind. Um, but, you know, if someone was to Google their issue, you yeah. know, someone's dealing with anger, yeah. and your title is The Incredible Hulk in You or something like right. that, rather than How to Deal with Anger, yeah. you know, which which search engine is going to pull up that message, yeah. you know, unless you have it in your, uh, you know, your keywords or mm-hmm. in your description or something like that. Which is okay, you know, and I, I understand that people are trying to reach a younger audience and they're trying to reach a generation and, right. and definitely they're hoping for that clickbait. But at the same time, if we can make it to where people get it right off the bat, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, they won't miss your title and they won't right. even miss the description too. They'll be really looking for it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had people that have, have sent me emails based on titles that they found, you know, some good, some bad. I had yeah. one guy just angry with me because I had a, a, a message in the young adults mm-hmm. ministry years yeah. and years ago. And it was called what to do when life is just okay. You know, Mm -hmm. if everything's just okay, are we going to settle and are we going to live in that space? And um, the guy just, uh, I don't know, he, he had a burr in his saddle, so to speak. Like he just, uh, you know, or an ax to grind or something. But um, yeah, I mean, it's actually evoked a response because he, he wanted to know what to do in that space. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't like what I said, but (laughs) you know. But we've had we've had other successes yeah, too, where yeah. people have said, "Hey, your message on this, or you know, whatever that that spoke to me." Mm-hmm. I remember years ago we had a couple in our church that uh, they were going through it. I mean, their life was just falling to pieces, and they went through. They actually, Pastor Jim brought them up on the platform. Do you remember this? It was on like a Wednesday night or something like that. That sounds familiar. Um, yeah, uh, I'll I'll tell you their names afterwards. Yeah. Um, but. They got up on the platform, and they were telling their story, and while they told their story, they read the titles of Pastor Jim's messages, and it was like it lined right up with the situation that they were going through. So wow. like when they lost their house, it yeah. was like dealing with loss. Mm. Uh, when their kids turned their back on them, it was, you know, praying for the wayward children. or so, uh, You know, it was just, yeah. I, that, yeah. that wasn't it, but that was kind of how it was. It was yeah. that, yeah. like, all along the way, and, um, and, and so they went through their whole testimony, and the whole time reading these titles. So, I mean, a title is important. Right. Uh, you know, I, I often tell, actually, I tell Pastor Jess this because she's talking to me about, hey, you know, here's my message, here's this, here's that. And I'm, so what is that one statement that if you could sum up your whole message in a in a title, what would that be? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, and that's a that's a thing that we grapple with as preachers is like, okay, what are those broad, broad brush strokes? What mm-hmm. is that overarching theme or thought and that really should be your title it should be grabbing it should be something that people want to get involved in but at the same time should tell them exactly i know what i'm getting into here 
I, I love that because, you know, obviously we want people to go to the word of God and we afford challenges in their life. Um, but that's what we know we get here, you know, we, because there is a title and yes, we, but you're not coming to this conclusion or you're not presenting your thoughts no. on how to live life in a tough world. You're going into the word of God and what the word of God says. And so when someone is searching or looking, they might not always know how to find those specific scriptures or verses. So when I'm looking for a teaching on that, yeah, that's exactly what I'm, I'm looking to do. I'm looking to be taught on how not just how there's a verse for this, but how do I apply these verses? And mm -hmm. I know that's one of your gifts as a teacher of the word is, OK, here's the scripture. Here's the truth for this matter. Right. How do I apply or live out this truth that will actually get to see the, the fruit or the change that I'm hoping for? Sure. Yeah, and that's what the title was kind of it, it's bringing that to, right? yeah it's bringing that <laughs> well and i and i think especially with this week's message living right in a world mm -hmm. gone wrong we had to define what right is yes. right we cannot live right if we don't know what is right right is it what i say is it what the, mm -hmm. the community agrees on yeah. is it, it you know what feels good mm -hmm. we we had to define righteousness yeah and and once we got into that then we could live right mm -hmm. in a world that's unrighteous yeah right. you know they, they're they're not doing god's will god's way right. And so it's unrighteous. It's wrong. Yeah. And yet people have such a hard time saying that nowadays. Yeah. But but we as Christians are called to live right. Mm -hmm. And we can't be right unless we know what right is yeah. and do right in, in our expressions and in our activities. And so that's where, you know, that title was important because right. it, it did lead us into the thought of, OK, well, what is right? What is wrong? Yeah. And then how do I do that? You know, God will never tell you what to do without telling you how to do it. Yeah, that's good. Well, it maybe can you rewind a little bit and and maybe bring an extra that as you have extra time here on this platform to c make that distinction cuz uh, you talked about it in the message about and you even walked us through how he makes us right because yeah. he can't and, and the way I was writing like oh he he's god so he can't have any wrong in him right so i'm not going to make you an heir if you're wrong. So at first I have to make you right. So, you know, I think this is where, and we're going to get into in these next verses. It'll be interesting yeah. to see what the titles come out of yeah. this next <laughs> section of Romans one, because it gets crazy. Yeah. But, um, it starts talking about the wrath of God mm -hmm. against all unrighteousness. So God is absolutely perfect mm -hmm. in his perfection. When there is a violation of his law, mm -hmm. Whether that's the conscience, whether that's the written law, you know, the, the law given to Moses, right? Uh, I, I read this scripture last night that every uh, violation of the law was given as just punishment. Right. God would be unjust and therefore imperfect if he didn't punish sin. Right. So with Adam and Eve, he gave them a command. So they had a law mm -hmm. that was given to them by the word of God that was righteous. Mm -hmm. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil. Right. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. So the 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 law was given along with a consequence. Right. So if God said this is going to happen and then it didn't happen, God would be unjust, unrighteous, he'd be a liar, and he would no longer be God. Yeah. Right. But being God means that any time that his uh, law is violated, it would have to receive a just punishment. Now, when we say the word just, we mean that it's right. It's yeah. it's it's good. It's right. It's it's uh, deserving, I guess you could mm -hmm. you could use that term. Um, you know, there's probably a more eloquent way of saying it, yeah. but really, uh, we're going to unpack these concepts as we get into Romans because it talks about God being just and the justifier. Right. That see, in order for God's justice to be satisfied, a punishment had to be carried out. Right. The only way that He could keep us in fellowship with Him is if we were right, because mm -hmm. God can't even look upon sin. Okay. Yeah. Right. He right. turned His face when Jesus was on the cross. Right turned away from that's why Jesus cried out my God my God why have you forsaken yep. me because in that moment he became sin who knew no sin mm -hmm. and so so God who cannot have sin in his presence that's why Satan was cast out of heaven right. iniquity was found in him and bang he's gone he's right. Jesus said I saw him like lightning cast down. right yep. Yep. that that's how fast it was I saw Satan fall like lightning he was cast out of heaven a war broke out in heaven right we see these scriptures because God is absolutely righteous holy and just and therefore, when we were in a sinful position, God had to carry out his word. So Adam and Eve, they didn't fall down dead physically, but they were separated from God spiritually. Yeah. They were dead in their transgression and sin, as we all were, yeah. right? And that's where Romans 5 comes along and tells us, even though we didn't all sin in the likeness of Adam, we all 
violated our conscience, and we were all in a place of deserving the righteous judgment of God right. for sin in our lives. We all died. Mm -hmm. Now, God didn't want to leave us in that place, but we have a predicament because God's justice has to be satisfied, but his love is desired. Right. Now, his love overcame because his love found a way mm -hmm. in Christ to take the place of our punishment. Right. The penalty for our sin was carried out on him. Therefore, it didn't have to be carried out on us. Yeah. And, and Jesus coming perfect, living the spotless life, was the only one who could qualify to take the sin of others and right. be the substitute. Yep. It had to be an innocent life given for a guilty party. Right. Um, in fact, I'm getting ready next week to start my Bible college class, and we, we unpack yes. this in, in length Love and in covenant. detail. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, this is this precursor to me teaching that. Yeah. But uh, but really, you know, when Propi we take a look at that, propitiation. you got it. That's, that's that the big $20 word, class, propitiation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, to satisfy God's violated justice, right? Yep. Uh, satisfy, satisfy God's wrath. Uh, you know, uh, turning away his violated justice. So that, that's that's what Jesus did when, when he became sin. He became the propitiation. Mm -hmm. He was the one that turned away God's wrath by satisfying his violated justice. Mm -hmm. Finally, I said it right. Yeah. So if you're writing notes, <laughs> write that one down, okay? Just rewind that one, not the other ones. <laughs> to satisfy God's... See, now <laughs> I can't even... I'm done. I'm done. I need to go it's back to my... It's a it tongue is. <laughs> yes. To turn away God's wrath by satisfying his violated justice. There you go. So Jesus did that by becoming sin... For us mm -hmm. on the cross, God poured out the wrath right. for sin upon Jesus on the cross. That means that when we're judged, because mm -hmm. we are going to be, everybody's right. going to be judged, right, yeah. in the future, we're not judged for our sin. Right. Thank God for that. Because God already, pay, he already paid it's all right, if, for that. If it's on Jesus, it's not on you. Right. Right? Good. Now, for our works, mm -hmm. we will be judged right. as Christians. Now, the world, this is where we're going to get into the next part of Romans 1, the world that's in sin still, that has not change their position yeah. in Christ yeah. to a righteous position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they still have the wrath of God being stored up for sin yeah. upon them. Okay. And that's where Jesus came and he said that, uh, you know, those that do not believe in the Son of Man are already condemned because they did not believe. We, we were already under judgment, already under condemnation. Yeah. Jesus is our escape. Right. He, he is our way. He is our door. He is, you know, everything to us. He's, yeah. he's our shield. He's our protection. He's our clothing. He's he's everything. He's the one that robes us, right, with righteousness. Yes. We now can have that right position with God without and it's a that continual state of righteousness. Continual state, right. yes. It, even if you sin in the flesh, right. you're still positionally righteous, even yeah. though your action See, that's was unrighteous. So good to know because, and and stop me if I'm getting ahead, but I was just having this conversation with Pastor Jess actually yesterday because talking about how so many believers get into this place of feeling unworthy or mm -hmm. feeling unjust. And it's just, be, and it's because of some of what you said, as far as where we know God is a God of justice, we yes. know that he punishes sin. Right. And so where does that, maybe you can walk us through people watching or people that feel discouraged because they just can't seem to get over the hump of certain sin right? and feeling constantly condemned, although we know condemnation is not of Jesus. right? But that's kind of the position they feel. They feel judged or, or afraid. I'm going to be judged. I'm messing up. What would be the encouragement for them there? Or because, hey, if God's a God of justice, then I have to be. Right. right. So where is love and mercy spectrum? Where does all this cross? Can you walk us through? It's a great question because there, there's uh, two words that, that you, you hit one of them, and that is condemnation. Right. The Bible says there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So yes. if you're in Christ, you're righteous. Yes. You are not condemned right. with the world. Right. The world is already condemned, mm -hmm. and sin is condemned, right? But our sin was condemned in the flesh of Jesus. His, yeah. his body on the cross took our sin for us. So we are not condemned. But when we do something that is unrighteous in the flesh, mm -hmm. now we, we mess up, we sin, okay? We feel bad. Why? Because of another word that starts with the letter C, and that's yes. conviction. Yep. Yep. The Holy Spirit convicts us right. of our sin and says, hey, that was wrong. And we feel bad. Right. Now, that's not condemnation. We're not condemned. The devil wants to condemn. You're so bad. Right. You're going to hell. Right. You're not right. Give us the quick distinction between those con condemnation and conviction. So condemnation is is exactly what I was saying. The devil's con condemning you. You're going to hell. You're you're lost. You're a lost cause. It's like guilt and shame. Ab absolutely. And so you you feel like giving up on God because of that. Conviction is that was wrong. 
I feel bad, so I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. I feel bad, so I'm going to repent, yeah. which repentance is turning from your way, having a change of heart and mind, and going God's way. Right. It's that 180-degree turn from, from my thing to God's thing, yeah. right? And, and so repentance, the Bible says godly sorrow produces repentance, which mm-hmm. leads to everlasting life. Yeah. So we're, we're on the right path when we feel bad about our sin. Yeah. Now, don't feel bad about it forever. Feel bad about it to where you confess it to God, right. you repent of it, and then when it, that opportunity comes up again, you're, you're actively resisting and fighting your mm-hmm. flesh. That, that's where people that, that have besetting sins, whether it be things like pornography or, uh, you know, the, the drug abuse, addictions, mm-hmm. right? Um, there are people that, that are chronic liars or things that, that go on in their life that they don't want to do, but they find themselves going back to over and over and over again. Um, it's a propensity of their flesh. Yeah. Those things that are, the, that are in us, we recognize them, and when those things happen, we feel bad about them, but we don't get condemned by them. Yeah. We, we're convicted by the Holy Spirit, which says, okay, I feel bad about this, I confess it, I was yeah. wrong, and then we turn from our way, we turn and go God's way, yeah. and we change our course of action. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that's where people can, can get under condemnation, and then they give up on God. Yeah. I'm going to stop going to church, I'm just going to sink myself into this sin, I guess this yeah. is how I am. Right. Uh, you know, all those lies yeah. of the enemy, whereas God gives us the power of his Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and, and God gives us the ability that under that conviction, we can repent and turn, yeah. and so, uh, you know, we see growth when yeah. that happens. We see ourselves, hey, I, I'm, I'm not where I want to be, mm-hmm. but I'm not where I used to be, Yeah, right? I, I'm growing in this feels hopeful. It, absolutely. Right? Like, I feel like, oh, shoot, but it's almost a good thing that I, I felt bad, but I yes. feel like, but I can do better. Absolutely. Right? Where condemnation makes me want to give up. And walk yes, away. that that that's really the difference. Condemnation is a is a stopping point, right? You're just done. You're yeah. you're you're going to hell. Yeah. Conviction is is we're not done. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's yeah. get better, right? Let's do better. Let's let's live better. Yeah. God has a better way, you know. And and with that comes the power of the Word of God. It's a seed that's sown, and that's where you know when I had to fight the things in my flesh to grow and to uh, grow up mm-hmm. and mature. I had to have those scriptures yeah. that the Holy Spirit would bring in those con- convicting moments. You know, it was, yeah. I, I had that Holy Spirit conviction that says, hey, you know, y- you're wrong. Yeah. And here's the word to show you why you're wrong and where you're wrong. But also with that word gives you the power to overcome. So I would confess those scriptures over my life. Mm-hmm. You know, there've been mindsets. There's been things that I've been able to com- combat mm-hmm. and things from uh, even, you know, generational things in my family that I've had to, to come up against. But I've overcome those things by the power of the word and I've grown. Right. You know, I'm not where I was last year, 10 yeah. years ago, 20 years ago, you know. Uh, I, I I see the growth, and I've been able to overcome in those areas and see what God is doing and, and be able to have victory in those areas. Now, is it still a struggle at times? Yes, yeah. but it's not the same struggle. Right. You know what I mean? And the devil would love to bring it back to that, but it's not that. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I, I wanted to spend, because and you, you talked about it a little bit last night in your message last night, Pastor Dan, when you talked about as believers having conversations with other believers, encouraging them to do better, yes. bringing conviction. Yeah. But I would say... Oftentimes, the biggest culprits of condemnation can be other believers. Can be, yes. Right, because oh, you're like you're bringing shame on people. You're like you're doing this. How can you do that? Now you talked about we we should be in a position as 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 brothers and sisters in Christ, where iron can sharpen iron, where we can, in some sense, we would say call you out on it. But I would have to say like the position, like not even God condemns, so I shouldn't, right? Like, <clears throat> how but do God I, convicts, right? But I, yeah, right. So I shouldn't bring shame on you. But I should lovingly say, hey, man, that's not what we do. Right. And, and that's and not I, who we are. And, and I think culturally we've gotten away from things, wonderful words like confrontation, conviction, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because of the condemnation. Right. And, and definitely, you know, I, I know our conscience will come and tell us things, too. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit speaks through the voice of our conscience to us. And there will be convicting times where we can condemn ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, and, and get into that condemnation and, and say, oh, I'm just a whelp. I'm just the worst. I'm, I'm a worm. I want to crawl in a hole and die. All those things that, that come into our minds. And, and there's a great scripture that says that even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts. Yes. And I love that fact that God points that out, that like, hey, you know what? I'm even, I'm even greater than your own heart. Yeah. Your, your own conscience is telling you these things. Listen to what I say above all else. Mm-hmm. And I think as, when, as believers, when something's brought to us from another believer that, you know, even if they're well-intentioned and they're doing it in the wrong way, we have to search our own hearts and say, 
hey, is there truth here? Yeah. Is God trying to show something to me? Did I did I do that? You know, and did I do it the way? Is it as extreme as they're making it? I mean, we we've we've heard ungodly things about us in our life yeah. from multiple sources, uh, whether it be uh, individuals in the church, close people to us, yeah. friends and family members, um, even online to people that don't even know us. Right. And we've had to take a step back and say, okay, number one, who is the source? Do we trust them? Are they are they worth speaking into our lives? Yeah. And, and and if not, obviously, many of those we kick out. But there have even been ones that have been anonymous that we, we haven't even known about. But we've looked at this situation and said, okay, well, Lord, reveal that to me. Yeah, for sure. And there's been times where it's been like, nah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what yeah. do they know? Yeah, but, yeah. but there's been other times where we've said, okay, I can see why they say that. Mm-hmm. And I'll work on that. Right. But it hasn't been condemnation, you know. And, and and then even the 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 people that have been close to us, or you know, members of our church that have brought things to us, uh, maybe they didn't bring it the the best way. Right. Uh, even with the best of intentions, mm-hmm. sometimes people have wanted to hurt us, right. you know. And and we've had to take a step back and say, okay, let's take a look at this. Is right. there truth here? Right. And there have been situations where we've had to stop and say, wow, yeah, I handled that wrong. Right. You know, right. and, that's and wisdom and maturity, wisdom and maturity. And and that's something that's lacking, I believe, in our mm-hmm. society. People yeah. are very, uh, I don't know, sensitive yeah. is a good word, yeah. uh, hypersensitive. Yeah. Um, you know, feelings have become the, the trump card to, to everything right. else, to truth, right. to to uh, things that are staring and glaring things that are yeah. staring at us in our faith. Yeah. You know, I and know, we don't want to really hurt anyone. I strive to be open to self-reflection and self-assessment. And, and having to be very, you have to be intentional. It's tough though, because you're always going to come out with something that needs to be adjusted. So like, we don't like those things, right. but if I want to grow, I have to self-assess. Right. I have, or at least not self, just within myself, partnering with the Holy Spirit, allowing the truth of his word, be the one who's the guide in my self-assessment. Right. Right. In other words, that's the rubric. The Holy Spirit and his word is the rubric on which I assess Kind of like it's like grading my paper versus having you grade my paper. Yes. <laughs> well, and I think that's where the, the, the community of faith comes into this, too, is because if there is someone outside of you that can see you mm-hmm. without your lens, yes. we, we don't see our flaws sometimes because we we can't see the forest yeah. through the trees. Yep. We're, we're in it so much so that we don't even see it any longer. But someone outside of our own perspective can look at our life and say, hey, here's something that's going on. And that's where the book of Proverbs says wounds from a friend can be trusted more than the kisses of an right. enemy. That's good. You know, yes. and, and a wound is inflicted in a harsh way. Right. I, I mean, that, and, and that's the, 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 you know, sobering statement about this whole thing is, is that there's going to be times where people speak words to us that, yeah. will, that will hurt. Right. They're, they're going to cause right. some lasting effects in our, in our life bruising cutting breaking you know those things but there are things in us that uh, unless we have that sober uh, piercing at times reality brought to us we won't change which by the way did you see the amount of the response from people yesterday when you asked about rifts in relationships it was shocking i i i was shocked yeah and and what we're talking about is uh in the service last night uh, you you felt led to pray over people who have maybe had rifts in their fa- between mm-hmm. loved ones, friends, uh, re- re- family relationships, and believe for healing for that. And you ask them to raise their hands, and the response of people who I th- and you specifically said, if God doesn't intervene, it's, the relationship yeah. is done. And again, obviously you d- you opened it up to marital, but obviously just even with friendships, best friends, mm-hmm. cousins, family members, where there's just rifts in family. And the response was shocking. Yeah, overwhelming. Um, which, in contrast to the church hurt, when I had people yeah. raise their hands for church hurt, there was less than I thought right, there would be. Right. Which, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by yeah, that. I yeah. mean, there still was a, a significant number of people. Yeah. However, you know, I, I was pleased to see that because that shows me that maybe something that is elevated because of the voice yes. that brings it. Sometimes we see this as such a big deal. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and I think that's telling in the sense of these, you know, Wednesday night is uh, people want to be there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's maybe not our seeker church yeah. service where yeah. people are, are trying to find a church or trying mm-hmm. to find God or, you know, whatever. And so I, I would expect with people, especially unbelieving that are mm-hmm. coming in, they, oh, yeah, I've got church hurt, you know, and that sort of a thing. These are mature believers. Right. These are people that want to be in church. And to see the population and who is saying, yeah, I have church hurt. It wasn't as great as, like we said, those that maybe had a rift in a relationship, mm-hmm. 
but it wasn't church related. Yeah. That showed me, okay, you know, I, in, in some terms, you know, maybe some of the publicity of that yes. ha- has been overemphasized Social just because media of yeah. accounts, blogs. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah I mean, the church sure. can do no right in, right. in those terms. Yeah. But, but when we, I look at people that want to be in church that are saying, Hey, I'm mature enough to be here. Mm-hmm. I'm seeking God. I, I want to grow. I want to mature. And, and yeah, I have church hurt Yeah, somewhere along the way. Right. Hey, here they are, yeah. and it's not as big of a population as well, maybe I, I would have thought. I love how you broke it down, right? Because, again, I know we're going into the wrong service. <laughs> <laughs> but last night you were just like, be, of course you've had church hurt because there's people. In people place. in the church, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there, there's going to be hurt. There's going to be pain and disappointment. Sure. Uh, and that's just dealing with people. And part of that, go, going back to now Sunday, is living right in those things because the world around us is wrong. People will handle things wrong. Right. We'll handle relationship wrong. We'll say things to family and friends that will hurt them. But I think we've seen the elevation in the amount of either offense or the amount of pain that we allow your honest statement yeah. to do to me. So now I can't even be friends with you because you said that. I can't believe you said that when oftentimes if they're believers, I want to assume that they said it in love. Maybe they didn't say it right. Yeah. Maybe they didn't, you know, come across the best. Um, But ultimately they want to help. You know, we don't just go out trying to hurt people we love. The the majority of the church uh, is, is, you know, really wanting to do the best for God and the best for their, their brother and sister. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I I think about, you know, what pastor Jim used to say about pastors. He'd, He'd say, you know, there are some bad ones out there, but that's not the majority. Right. You know, that's yeah. the very few. Most pastors just love the congregation, want to serve, want to do the best. They're not sleeping around. They're not, right. you know, uh, just after money. That's sort of thing. Yeah. Most of them just want to serve God's people. And mm-hmm. I think the same could be said of the saints. You know, there, there definitely are savage wolves. Mm-hmm. We understand that there are wheat and tares. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's a lot of people out there that that do want to do harm, but uh, by and large, when you look at the body of Christ and people that are sitting in church, they want the best. Yeah. They 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 want people to grow and they want that encouragement. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where back you know if we're doing sermon rewind back to the weekend, you know we talked about living from the position and practice. This should be a part of our practice. It's still good. And, and then the the big one though that really. I think struck a chord because most of the comments at the back door that I got about this weekend's message was that third point, mm-hmm. patience. Right. Right? Yeah. And, and and position and practice, we understand that from the definition of righteousness, yeah. and, and it makes sense in that term, and we do need to live from that position. Yeah. We do need to, to live out that godly practice, but that patience, and I think that's where, whether it's with church hurt, whether it's with ourself, mm-hmm. where we fall short, where we yeah. mess up, uh, where we miss it, patience with what God is doing, patience with the process, yeah. patience with people, right. you know, those things are, are where we live. Right. And that's where the traction, I believe, of the, of the message, uh, you know, in both terms, yeah. it, you know, it's it's by faith and patience that we inherit the promise. Yeah. Right? And so go into that more. Why patience? Because uh, is it kind of just say, hey, I'm, I'm letting you guys know we're going to do this, but it doesn't just change like that. You have to let it play out. Is that kind of like the trust the process? Type uh, yeah, of? because, you know, there was a beautiful illustration that, that probably I could have used, but um, it, we've used it over the years in different times mm-hmm. of a butterfly, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there was a, a scientist watching a butterfly come out of its cocoon. He gets impatient, mm-hmm. and over the process of time, he's like, it's struggling, and then it kind of stops, and yeah. he's going, what's going on? And it kind of hits this point where it can't go anymore, yeah. and so he takes some little scissors, and he just cuts a little side of the cocoon, and that butterfly falls down to the bottom. He comes out. He's waiting for it to spread its wings yeah. and fly, and it dies, mm. and he, he wonders what's going on, so he goes over to another scientist that studied butterflies and asks him, what, what happened? You know, I, It was struggling. I let him out, and the guy says, you should have never let him out. The struggle that he was going through is what was going to produce in him the development of his strength and his wings, and that's an integral part of the process, so that when he comes out of that cocoon, if he's had that struggle, now he can fly. If he hasn't had that struggle, Mm -hmm. because those things weren't produced, he can never fly, and he will end up dying. And I think that's the same thing with us, is that we want to skip the process. We want to microwave faith. Mm -hmm. You know, where we pop it in, yeah. we push a button, and in a minute or two it comes out. Right. Rather than having a, you know, 
a, a pit fire yeah. faith that yep. you you have to dig a hole. You have to put rocks down there. You have to put fire down there. You have to cover it up. Then you have to uncover it. Then you prepare the meat. You you know what I mean? Like when you go to a pig roast somewhere, it it's a deal. You know, it's a process. I remember being in the Philippines and watching this guy sew up the pig. You know, and I've got pictures of it's kind of nasty looking, <laughs> but I mean, literally, yeah. it it took days of yeah. preparation. It took and and. You know, in our mindset, we don't even think about this, raising the pig. Right. Right. To get it to the point where you yeah. can cook it. Yeah. Right? Yep. That takes years yeah. for a full-grown pig. Mm-hmm. Uh, our mindset is far different than the mindset of the people in, in Jesus' day. And when the Bible was being written, their, their understanding of patience and their understanding of time. And, and that's where it says that the, the farmer patiently waits for the mm-hmm. crops. Yeah. And yet we think, I'm sowing this word... You know, the seed of the word. I'm sowing a lot of seed. Why am I not reaping? Hey, right. there's seed, time, yeah, and then harvest. Well, I, I can't help but wonder, and I don't know if it's maybe a Western idea uh, in the Western church. Basically, any adversity means I did something wrong or something's wrong. Something changed up the process. But then I, I think of the scripture. I don't know where you could tell me, tell me where Paul's writing. We're like this. Pr- the, the adversity produces what you need to be able to overcome right like yeah uh, it's uh, he talks about like basically like the trouble produces uh or it, it creates the patience that you need to be able to live this out right Am I yeah i mean uh james one let patience have its right. perfect work yes. uh you've got the apostle paul talking about that uh you know i believe it's romans 5 1 through uh, 1 through 5 somewhere yeah. in there uh, where he talks about that that it produces character and yes, character produces is that yes. what you're yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. yeah yeah that's romans uh, i mean romans 5. we're going to hit it yeah this is uh, a gem- that's what we talked about how there's whole classes on oh this man book. <laughs> this this book is is huge yeah. you know um but then you take a look at some of the patience of the saints joseph mm-hmm. it, it says yes. that god bound him in fetters and and he was hurt by that mm-hmm. but God was testing him during yeah. that time. I mean, they, they, we don't even think about the, the process that, right. that's going through. Which is why count it all joy when you face trouble. Right, because you know God's because doing something. This, because God is in the midst instead of, oh my gosh, I'm in sin. Oh my, what, like the, what's my secret sin or what's, what's going on? I, again, yeah. it's because we've maybe bought this lie that it's just going to be perfect. And, any, and, and, you know, oh, we see Pastor Dan. He must not have any troubles or struggles. He must... Everything just must work out for him. Yeah. But on the contrary, you know, you have to face a lot of challenges to be right. able to have gotten to a place to recognize. Right. It's it's oh, just yeah. I would would you say it's like, oh, wow, you just now the adversities and troubles you get, you actually can att- can know how to identify, know where to place them. Right. Like, oh, this is just because I'm seeing this. Right. <laughs> you were just we, in prayer, staff prayer like, hey. You're probably going through things, mm-hmm. but this is why. It's because we're pushing towards conference. We're, the God's doing something in your life. There's adversity, kind of like you're on the other side of... Yeah, I, th- I think in some ways, yes. In other ways, you know, we're all still walking this out, and there's mm-hmm. times where you wonder what's going on, and you realize, oh, mm-hmm. I'm in the furnace of affliction, right? That's right, good. Because God is doing something to produce in me the strength of character so that mm-hmm. I can hold right. what he's about ready to pour into my life. Yeah. And I, I think that's the, the reality that a lot of people miss when they face challenges and pressures. I'm living righteous. I'm, I'm doing everything right. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong. And yet I've got so much coming at me. Right. And that's where patience and patience is not passivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times people think of patience as, as being, you know, OK with sitting in the DMV. Mm-hmm. That's not patience. Yeah. Good. Patience, well, it is patience, but <laughs> um, patience is is really when you're actively waiting on the Lord. Mm-hmm. You, you're looking to His promise. You're following His ways. You, you, you you're not passive. You're active. You're mm-hmm. you're you're. Pro- there's good. something being produced in you in that moment, and I think that's where, you know, when you take a look at God saying, "I've drawn you from the furnace of affliction." Right? I'm the potter. You're the clay. There has to be that process of being set on a shelf and left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then put into a furnace where there's heat, yeah, and, and there's hardening inside of us, so that when something hot mm-hmm. gets poured into our life, whether it be soup or a yeah. meal or something like that, right? We're we're holding something that God is putting into our life that's yeah. good for us, you know, or that's good for someone. Here, we we wouldn't be able to hold it if we were still mushy clay. Yeah, 
we would come off into that thing. We have to be hardened. Yeah. We have to be brought through that process so that it produces that strength of character in us yeah. to be able to carry the weight of what God's putting in us. That's so good. I, I think that's a discipline that I think we're very quickly losing um, because I, I, I think, you know, you, <clears throat> you mentioned being at the DMV or like we're no longer able to be bored. Right. Like right. at the DMV, you're like, oh, I can hit, wait here. I have my phone at the lines uh, at the line in Disneyland or sitting in any line. You just, just have to like it's almost an art of being bored. Right. Yeah. Like you had to learn know how to be bored. I'm bored. Like, But now we want to constantly entertain ourselves. We we want no friction, no challenge. Uh, and so we've to make our lives easier, gotten rid of any space that would create discomfort or sure. challenge. And really, it's a discipline of being able to, like you're saying, just sit in that mm-hmm. and now hear the Holy Spirit walk us through those things like a f- like being in the furnace. And yeah. I, I just it's it's a beautiful thought. May, how, how could we maybe reintroduce that discipline where it's so easy to kind of get rid of that? You know, um, I think that uh, solitude helps us with that. Mm, definitely. Um, when you get alone and you and, and when I say alone. Yes. Alone. Yes. You know, and I know that's hard to do, especially young parents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're working, that sort of a thing. It is it is hard. Solitude is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why I believe Jesus said, go into your prayer closet. Mm-hmm. Get alone. Right. Uh, get get to the place you mentioned boredom. It's a great word. Uh, it's a great word for believers because it isn't often until our minds aren't working on something yeah. that we're open to hearing from God. And, and that's where the discipline of silence you know, it's so not good. just solitude, but also being silent, yeah. being quiet, uh, waiting on the Lord. You know, I think about my little dog whenever I've got food. I've got two little dogs, and they're just gluttons, the two of them. <laughs> and uh, they're very bad. They they come and they follow us around. Yeah. Um, last night, my son had a bagel in his hand, yeah. and he would drop it down. And my, my little white dog, Max, he would just jump up and try and grab it. Yeah. And uh, and Jessica was like, oh, my gosh, you better watch it. You know, he's he's quick. <laughs> And I mean, he's a 13-year-old dog. Yeah, he's yeah. getting old. And uh, we call him our little old man. He saunters <laughs> around, you know, his little back legs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, but I mean, when there comes food, that dog will do tricks. He'll be spinning around, jumping yeah. up and down, yeah. barking, all yeah. that kind of stuff. When Pastor Jim was alive, if Pastor Jim had food, Max yeah. would sit next to him and stare at him. And yeah. Pastor Jim would look over and say, I'm sorry, Max. I don't have anything for I can't. They won't let me feed you. I, I can't do Okay, just a little bit. And and he'd feed him yeah. to the point where if he wasn't paying attention to Max, Max would just take his paw and he'd <laughs> tap his leg and just right. remind him that he's yeah. there. And and I think about for us, again, patiently waiting. It's mm-hmm. not passive, it's active. That little dog was actively making sure that Jim knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here, Yeah. by the way. Yeah. And then woof, you know, like... Yeah. Here I am, yeah. and I and I think that's part of what patience is too. We think if I'm patient, then I'm not even going to talk to God about it. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Right. patience is God. Yeah, I just want to remind you, right. I'm still here. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting. I'm watching. Mm-hmm. My eyes are on you, God, and I know you got what I need. Mm-hmm. But but here I am, mm-hmm. you know. And 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 that activity that says, hey, I, I'm on this. You know, God's looking for faith. God's looking for us to believe in, in a faith that doesn't give up, a faith that doesn't let yeah. go, a faith that, that says, I know you have what I need, yeah. and I know you're also good enough to give it to me. Seek, knock, and ask, right? A- a- you got to, uh, yeah. I'm messing up the order. ASK. <laughs> ASK, there you go. Right, ask, ask seek, seek knock. and knock, yeah. yeah. It, you know, so I'm asked, and I'm, and here I go. <laughs> Did you hear me? <laughs> yeah, hey. Well, yeah, the, the boldness of the man in the middle of the night, his neighbor wouldn't open to him because... He had a need. Mm-hmm. He opened to him right. because he was bold enough right. to right. come and ask. Pastor Joe preached on this uh, last Sunday night. It's brilliant, right. you know, when you think about it. it. It wasn't about the need that moved the man to open right. the door and give him food. Right. It, it was about the boldness of yeah. his friend. Audacity. The audacity. Right. The audacious yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great word. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that we would be audacious with God enough to, to, to ask big, mm-hmm. And to wait on him for those things mm-hmm. and to have patience that says, God, I'm not giving up. All right. I, I'm going to be here yeah. until. Yeah. I love this, Pastor. In, in kind of wrapping up, I think we we changed topics, but we stayed all within the theme of, of living right and living in right standing because we are living this out. Yeah. And I think we we covered a lot of things today in terms of living this out. There was one more nugget. I know we even we went to the last point, but I wanted to this part that 
Uh, number two was live out your faith practice. And we, yes. we talked about practice. But I know I made a little note here about how righteousness is a verb, right? And that we talked about the commercial that like verb, it's what you do, right? Like, and yeah. so living in righteousness, living righteously or, or walking out our faith is a, an action word. It, it takes living out. Uh, it takes, uh, it's, it's a practice of, of living in righteousness, right? Because we alone are not righteous except for by the blood of Jesus right. and, and how we are made right. Um, but maybe a closing thought on, on what it looks like living out, or if you kind of had to do the thumbnail equivalent to yeah. your message and, and living out right in this world or, or closing thoughts. Well, I, I picture, it, in order to picture this properly, right, we're, we're, we're picturing God. God is righteous, mm -hmm. and because he is righteous, everything he does is righteousness. Mm -hmm. So his actions and his activities are righteous by nature. The fact of who he is, what he's doing is right. And for us, I think that that same picture applies if we are righteous, and we are. Mm -hmm. If you've been uh, you know, brought into Christ, you are in a position of righteousness. You're in him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are righteous. Right. You have the position. You're, you're in the right with God. Yeah. And when God looks at you, he says, we're right. We're mm -hmm. good, right? Yes. We're, we're okay. The, the sin issue has been taken out of the way. But to live from that position and to live out that so practice means we do what is righteous. Mm -hmm. So we end up doing what is right because we are right. Yeah. And, and that's not arrogance. That's not, you know, hubris or any of that kind of stuff. It, it's simply the fact that I know that because of who I am, what I do will be an extension of that. I, I can't do anything outside of that. Mm -hmm. So when I see unrighteousness from the position of sin or from the position of the flesh or from the position of, of uh, the unbeliever, I can't do that, Yeah. right? And, and, and that's where living right in a world gone wrong, in many ways, we're a, a fish swimming upstream mm -hmm. because the world is going this yes. direction, where, yes, whereas we're good. called to live in this direction. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's going to be a challenge for us to live righteous. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be hard to live right in a world gone wrong because it would be easier mm -hmm. to float with the current. Yeah. It'd be easier to go with the flow in the stream. Uh, everyone else is going that way. We'll be accepted. We're not making waves. We're not bumping into anybody. But when you live right, mm -hmm. when you live out that faith practice, it's going to be counterintuitive to the flesh. Yep. It's going to be opposed by the devil. It's going to be confused by the world. Yep. People aren't going to understand your position. They're not going to understand your practice. Why are you swimming this way? Everyone else is going yeah. this way. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a it's a simple thought, and it's yeah. a it's an honest question too. And that's where we get the opportunity to say, well, I'm going this way because I'm right. Right. Yeah. And, and some people are going to go, oh, well, maybe I need to turn around if it's right. You know, other people are going to say, who are you to say you're right? You know, everyone else is going this way. This is the way it is. Right. And and it, and don't judge me and all that other stuff. And it's going to stir things up and make it even harder to live right. Mm -hmm. Because now there's persecution. Yeah. Now there's opposition. And the enemy is going to try and take you out. Don't go right. Mm hmm don't do that. Yep. That's that's wrong. And the lie will come that yep. our position. And so there's tremendous pressure and a tremendous, uh, you know, force against us. But that's where if we stand fast in the Lord, if we hold fast with patience, yep. then we'll be able to live out our faith practice yeah, so good. more and more. Yeah. I love it, Pastor Dan. Great. I mean, I'm ex it makes me very excited for ah. What's to come, and I know that you know, especially as we get into other chapters. But even like you mentioned at the at the top of the episode, just even these next few verses Ooh. are going to be more of the same. So yeah, uh, we pray that you enjoyed yourselves. Um, come on out if maybe maybe you're obviously this is a supplemental, right? We uh, we focus our conversation on the sermon, and so we want to invite you out on a Sunday morning, whatever that is. Grab the podcast, but we want you to be here and be a part of what's going on. Love you guys. Thanks, yeah. Pastor Dan. Like and subscribe, share. Come yep. join us for church. Yeah. See you soon.